How's it going guys? This is Lucian Sword and I'm going to be starting a Sekiro Shadows Die Twice 100% walkthrough. I'm going to collect every item in the game, show every single secret, analyze every boss fight, and generally try to make this game a little bit easier for you guys that are going into it blind. So let's go ahead and start a new game. If you're coming into Sekiro from playing Bloodborne or Dark Souls, it's similar and different at the same time. I'm leaving the Japanese voice acting because I think it's a little more authentic to the experience, but you can switch that to English in the settings if you wish. ロスが亡くしたか。ああ。共に来るか。飢えた狼。そして戦場で拾われた狼は修行の末熟達の忍びとなった。親の次に大事なものお前の心に刻むがよいあれが今日から一心の国取りから二十四年足名の国は斜陽にあり狼の忍びは全てを失っていた育ての義父も守るべき主も This is just the uh, intro prologue uh, area where you learn the basics of the game. It's also where we're going to pick up our weapon, our katana, that we're going to be using for the rest of the game. I'm not sure what that said because I can't read Japanese, but if anybody out there can, maybe you can translate that for me in the comments.
This is a challenging game. Uh, it can be brutal at moments. So my job is to make it as easy as possible for you guys. <laughs> All right, so this is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, we finally have control of our character. You can move around. You can jump. Um, can't do a whole lot else. So let's go ahead and pick up this letter. Kuro's Wolf, your destiny awaits you at the Moonview Tower. Escape from the well and find the tower bathed in moonlight. Even without a blade, you could reach it. Stay silent. Stay vigilant. All right, so let's just go ahead and get out of this place. It's going to teach you the basics of jumping. You can jump and jump again to get up the walls. You can jump and press square. I'm on I'm playing on PS4 Pro by the way. So those are the controls I'll be referring to. It's a beautiful looking game. This is a, a little bit bland in the gray color palette, but you can already tell this is going to have some really awesome moments. Let's go ahead and come up to this wall, hug the wall and we'll shimmy across this little cliff right here. Sekiro is a little bit different from Dark Souls and Bloodborne here. You can also see that you can peek around corners. You can also sneak in the grass. So there's more stealth elements. If you're crouched in the grass, uh, people can't see you very easily. <laughs> it's kind of funny the conversation that those guys are having about me. So let's creep across the grass all the way to this little hut, and there's actually a little broken hole down in the bottom we can sneak through. And uh, if you look up in the cracks, you can actually eavesdrop on these guys. So they're talking about the Divine Heir, which is a person who looks kind of like a child. And he's of a special bloodline, and I think that the main character that we are is also of the same bloodline, but I could be wrong on that. Alright, let's go ahead and sneak out of that building. Keep to the grass. Until we get a weapon, it's best to just avoid everybody. We can eavesdrop on these guys as well. They like to give you tips about what's ahead, so it is pretty good to eavesdrop. He's saying that even though the door is locked up there, uh, there is a hole in the side of the building, and that's really convenient for us. <laughs> it also makes it easy because we uh, can learn some of the mechanics of the game, so if you want, uh, you can press square to grab the ledge here and we'll shimmy across. You notice the ledges that have like the beat up look with all these lines and stuff. That usually means you can go ahead and grab those ledges. And we're going to jump across a little gap here. Let's grab this ledge. So in this video, we're going to do this intro portion and we're going to go ahead and do all the way up to the Chained Ogre boss fight. And he's a, uh, a pretty hard boss fight, and he'll be in Ashina outskirts, which we're going to enter after we talk to a few more people here. A couple more cutscenes here. <laughs> that is the Divine Heir. Welcome. <laughs> Apparently, he wants to escape. I think he's being held like prisoner, basically, because of his bloodline. Kasabimar. Our sword.
All right. We finally got our sword. Katana given by the by Kiro, the divine heir, heirloom of the Hirata family. A cadet branch descendant from Ashina. Once thought lost, it has found its way back into the hands of the wolf. The name K Kusabimaru beseeches a shinobi's role is to kill, but even a shinobi must not forget mercy. A mantra of the blade itself may manifest. Alright, so after he gives you the sword, go ahead and head upstairs to grab our first item of the game. A pellet. Pellets are basically used to give you a little bit of health over time. So let's go ahead and... Oh. My bad. Let's talk to him real quick. So he gives you the healing gourd, which is basically your Estus flasks or whatever if you're coming from Dark Souls. Secret passage beneath the moat. Alright, so we're gonna meet him under the moat and we're gonna blow a whistle. So, a uh, quick tip on using the gourd here if you. Well, first we have to go to our inventory here and equip it to our quick items. Let's go ahead and do that with the pellet and the homeward idol as well, which will warp us back to the last shrine that we were at. So, uh, we're going to find uh, gourd seeds later on in the game, which will level up uh, how many times you can use this. And uh, as you defeat bosses and whatnot, it'll also heal more uh, health over time. So, all right, so now we're good. Let's get out of here. So, now we can talk about posture and death blows, or critical strikes as I like to call them. Uh, this game is different from uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne in that there is no stamina bar, uh, for instance. Uh, when you're attacking somebody, they have a bar uh, at the top of the screen or above their head, and once you can max that bar out, you can just perform a critical attack by hitting the regular attack button, which is R1. You might see that little triangle above that dude's head. That's his awareness meter of me, so if it fills up, that means he's fully aware. Let's go ahead and uh, get a sneak attack on this guy. So when we walk up and it turns red like that, just go ahead and then attack with R1. That'll give us a nice sneak attack. I'll, I'll fight this guy head on so you can see what it's like. So circle is dodge. You can dodge any direction pretty much. L1 is going to be guard. You can guard most attacks, but as you saw when he hit me at the bottom there, my posture started to fill. If you're holding down guard, your posture will go back down pretty quick. Uh, compared to if you're not holding down guard. And if you hit the guard button right when he attacks, you'll actually do a guard break on him, and it'll usually max out or give you a ton of guard uh, posture break, sorry, on them and allow you to do that critical attack. So these guys are pretty easy to knock out, but don't you worry, we will have some tougher foes ahead. Let's go ahead and jump up here. So there's a couple paths uh, that you can take here, but we're going to go ahead and take this path to the left. Uh, we can sneak attack those guys if we want. So let's go ahead and crouch along this wall. They're not going to see us, don't worry. You could take them head on if you want, but... Actually, I'm going to go ahead and use my healing gourd. Didn't realize my health was really, really low. A tip on the healing gourd... Uh, when you're switching between items, sometimes you might be frantically trying to get to your healing gourd before you die. If you just hold uh, right or hold left, it'll quick select to the healing gourd. Oh no, I think that guy actually saw me. So I'm going to try to do a stealth attack on this guy. I'm going to jump down on him.
Didn't want to fight this many guys at once, but we'll be fine. The guys without the hats are the weakest, so I would recommend taking them out first. Oh man. There we go. Got the parry. These guys, you almost never even need to guard. You can just pretty much kill uh, by spamming the attack button. So that pretty much cleared out this area of guys. We can go ahead and check up here. Now that we're done with those guys, just explore a little bit. Oh, I thought I would get, get a parry off on this dude. Or a sneak attack, rather. Oh well. We got him. He's dead. Alright. So now we can go ahead and continue on. There's no items over here, but it's just cool to look around. Let's go. So we're going to be making our way over to that big bridge over there. So I don't actually have my grapple hook yet, so <laughs> I wanted to grapple to that tree, but we're going to get that grapple hook a little bit later. For now, let's go ahead and walk. Hold down circle, you can sprint. This guy is going to one-shot at me if I'm not careful. There we go. Whew, thank God I didn't die there. If you do die, guys, don't worry. You can re resurrect one time. There we go. Wait for his attack and then just hit that dodge button. Alright, so we got another pellet. I'm just gonna go ahead and use one so I'm not like gonna get one shotted here. <laughs> oh man. Alright, so that door is locked right there, so uh swing a right. And there's an item right here. I think it's some more fistful of ash, which you can basically throw those at enemies to uh distract them or whatnot. Let's take this path along to the left, and we're gonna shimmy this wall again. Once we get up to the bridge, we're going to be able to eavesdrop on these dudes. So you can see these scuff marks kind of mark where you can uh, climb and whatnot. Alright, let's eavesdrop on these guys. We just got orders to guard this secret passage. So, see that little dude underneath the bridge? We're, we're gonna go ahead and kill that guy. Not really sure what he's doing, but he's, he's dead. Probably working on the bridge. Alright, so after you kill that guy, just go ahead and drop down on the right side. You're going to have to hang on the ledge and then shimmy over to the left. And we'll drop down now. Let's grab that item. Some more pellets, which are useful. Um, I would recommend saving them if possible. Uh, we're going to get a what's basically the equivalent of a bonfire uh, pretty soon. And that'll, that'll heal you fully. So go ahead and drop down, drop down, drop down. All the way down to the bottom. This is basically going to be where we meet up with the Divine Heir. So let's go ahead and blow the whistle and call him. Wow, he got here fast. Okamiyo,よく見つけてくれた. So. So, so, 
Sorry, I'm trying not to talk during the cutscenes so you guys can get the uh, full experience. Let's go ahead and uh, venture forth now. When you get up here, you're going to encounter a boss that is unbeatable. Unbeatable. Uh, you're supposed to lose this guy, so not really even much point in fighting him. But before you do, just look around at this beautiful scenery. It is absolutely gorgeous. The, the grass. I love this area. I hope we can return to it in the future. Alright, let's approach. Enter another cutscene. Lord Genichiro. Dude, check out the bow on his back. How massive it is. And we're gonna die here. <laughs> Actually, we won't die. We will uh, just lose an arm. Sleep. Look at that bow. Alright, so he takes the divine air with that creepy looking person thing and leaves me to die. But I don't. So I'm going to get fitted with a prosthetic arm that basically acts as your multi-tooled uh, combat mechanism that can do a lot of different things. It's your harpoon. Uh, late, you get upgrades for it. At first, it's just your harpoon or your grappling hook, I should say. Uh, after a while you get upgrades and you can throw shurikens with it, you can do like flamethrower attack, you can do firecrackers, all different kinds of stuff. Other than that though, other than your prosthetic arm, you just use your sword. That's it. Don't ask how it works with his brain to control it. <laughs> they never explain it. <laughs> Alright, so we got the prosthetic. Very nice. Let me talk to this guy a little bit. He, uh, he could tell you uh, how you got there and about your new arm, but I'm going to go ahead and let you guys do that on your own. So after you're done talking to him, you can you can also inspect this Buddha thing if you want. He'll talk to you about his uh, master sculptor or whatever. Uh, so go ahead and head outside into this beautiful uh, bamboo grove area. And we're going to rest at our first idol. These are basically like your bonfires in this game. So let's go ahead and rest. That'll heal us up. It'll uh, restore our gourd. 
And it, it will also respawn all the enemies uh, for, for the most part, except for like bosses and whatnot. So let's go ahead and grab the item here, some more pellets. Uh, up the path to the right here is a guy that you can fight for basically practice. Uh, he's like a training dummy, so if you want to warm up to the combat, I highly, highly recommend doing uh, the training here, but I'm going to go ahead and skip that for this video. And then also, this is the offering box, which um, occasionally items will come to the box and they'll be glowing, and then I think you can use money to uh, purchase the items there. Let's go ahead and leave this, this area, go back to the front gate. This is uh, a place that you're going to be returning to often. It's called the Dilapidated Temple. Uh, it, when we find upgrades for the prosthetic arm, we're going to bring it back here for that guy to upgrade. We're also going to bring back our gourd seeds um, to upgrade to this lady right here. This is Emma. She's like the doctor, and she will basically upgrade your gourd. If you bring her, uh, what you call it, gourd seeds. Okay, we're done. We're done. Goodbye, Emma. Okay. Let's head over here to the left real quick. Ah. Uh, so this is going to be a secret passage area that we're going to be able to link back up to later. Uh, just wanted to show you that I thought we could spin through it first, but I forgot we have to unlock it. So um, we'll come back to that later. All right, let's head straight out into Ashina outskirts, guys. And we finally got our grappling hook. So when you see that little emblem, just go ahead and hit L2 and you can grapple yourself up. We're going to have to actually jump up this one. All right, this is our first real zone, like where we're going to be uh, venturing forth. So, yeah, man, feels good. Ashina outskirts, baby. More color in this view. Very beautiful. We're going to be making our way through this. So let's go ahead and grapple across to the tree branch. And rest at the idol here. Might as well. We haven't really killed anyone. Now that we have two idols, we can travel between them. I'm just going to go ahead and rest anyways. All right. So you have two pathways here. Uh, you can basically drop down and go that way, or you can go up top. Uh, there's items both ways, so we're going to do both. But for now, let's go ahead and go up top. I'm going to jump up here, turn right around and grab this Ungo's Sugar or Ungo Sugar. I don't know how you say it. It's basically a uh, defense boost. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and equip that. We're going to use that during boss fights, especially. I'm just going to kind of sneak my way over to this guy that we can see walking up here. Don't want to get spotted by that guy. All right, he's got his back to us. Let's go take him out. Oh, never mind. He saw us. Got him. All right, so if you hold down square, you get that little whirlwind on your body. That basically means you can collect loot that's nearby. All right, let's head up here. Um, I'm just going to take out this guy on the right for now. Let's see if we can get a sneak attack on him, because the dudes with the hats on him, like I said, they're a little bit tougher. You want to try to sneak attack those guys if you can. Let's grab the ceramic shard. This is basically something you can throw to draw people off. Uh, you can like get their attention with it, basically. I don't use it a whole lot, but I'm going to go ahead and equip it. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll equip it right there. All right, so I don't want to drop into this area quite yet. Let's actually go back up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up, back up, back up. There we go. Back up, let's go over to where we were at the uh, beginning of this area, and I'm going to drop down this time. Make sure there's no enemies down here. Alright, there's one guy right there. 
Let's go ahead and lock onto him and I'm gonna jump and BAM! So you saw in midair the uh, little red icon went on him. Just gotta be quick to push that. Let's go ahead and grab the pellets right here. Gonna swing down and around just to make sure we don't miss anything down here. Let's go up here. Grab some more ceramic shards right here. And let's take these guys head on, eh? What you want, boy? You want some? Come get it. Oh man, I tried to parry that, didn't work. Alright, so I'm getting close to getting critical attack myself, but it's okay. If you're in that position where your your posture is getting kind of full, I would recommend just dodging away. And uh, once you create some space between you and the enemy, then you can go ahead and hold down guard and that'll lower your posture uh, pretty fast. So I'm gonna, let's see, how do we wanna approach this? So there's three guys here. There's one down in the grass. You probably can't see him, but he is down there somewhere. The guy right above my head has a rifle and he will start shooting and it's really, really annoying. He could basically one shot you practically. And then there's the guy on the left with the sword. I'm thinking we should climb up that tower and sneak attack the sword guy. Um, that's going to probably be the easiest because he's the strongest enemy up there. I'm just going to go around this beautiful looking tower. And drop down onto this. There's also some dogs up ahead. Just be careful they don't get your attention right now. Alright, I'm gonna jump and kill this guy. This will attract the attention of everybody else, so... Try to dodge the gun dude. Kill him as quickly as possible. Let's pick up that fistful of ash. And some more pellets. Alright, there is... I'm pretty sure there's a dude down here somewhere. Yeah, he's over there. Let's grab the Ungo sh sugar in this little area. Alright, maybe we can sneak attack this guy. He <laughs> he is not very aware. We just killed all his friends. Alright, he's down. Beautiful. Alright, so this area is clear. Let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to kill these dogs next. They pretty much are one shot, but just be careful. There should be two more dogs up ahead. I like to jump attack them because they don't seem to hit you very uh, well if you do that. Oh, come on, man. There we go. Alright, so no more threats here. We can go ahead and grab the uh, item over here safely. Ceramic shard. Doing pretty good here, guys, so far. I gotta say, we're doing pretty good. Alright, let's go ahead and grab this uh, sculptor idol right here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rest just to heal up. That will respawn the dogs, but that's okay. Now, you see over on the right where underneath attack power it shows like a blue progress bar. That's basically uh, your leveling up kind of. That's what you're gonna use to spend ability points later on in the game. Now, here's the thing. If you die and you resurrect and then you die again so that you can't resurrect, you're gonna lose uh, at least half of your experience there, and there's no way to get it back. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, it's not like Dark Souls where you can just go get your souls. Uh, it's not like that. So if you die, you just lose half of your experience, basically. But if you level up, uh, it won't de-level you or anything like that. It'll just take half of your unsaved XP, basically, in between levels. I really don't want to take damage from this dog. Uh, did this guy see me? Yes, he did. Alright, come at me, dude. I'll kill you. It's... Basically free experience, right? Aw, oh, you touched me, you punk. 
Alright, I don't think I got the attention of the gun guy, so we're just going to leave him for now. Oh, that's kind of annoying. I'm just going to go ahead and use a pellet to heal up, because I got plenty of them right now. Let's go ahead and grapple up top to this building. There's going to be an item over here to the left. This is going to be Shuriken Wheel, which is pretty useful. It basically adds the ability to throw shurikens from your prosthetic arm. Uh, we don't really need it right this second. Uh, but if well, I guess we can. Let's go ahead and uh, it'll give us full health as well. Let's go ahead and warp back. Uh, come on. Warp back to the uh, dude at the dilapidated uh, temple. I gotta say, loading times are actually pretty quick in this game. And they'll give you uh, tips as well. I think it loads faster than Bloodborne or Dark Souls, for example. So, it doesn't cost any money or anything. We're just gonna go ahead and come back in here and give it to this guy. Present the tool. Yep. Go ahead and load it up. Now you can only have three tools loaded onto your prosthetic arm at once. So after a while you have more than three, you will only be able to choose three of them. Alright, so now that we have a prosthetic arm, you saw that spirit emblem kind of absorb into me. So spirit emblems are basically your currency for using your prosthetic arm abilities. Every time you use your prosthetic arm ability, it uses a spirit emblem. Uh, you're going to find spirit emblems around the game that just are just laying around basically, and you're also going to get them from killing enemies. And you see down in the bottom right corner, it says I have two of them. So I can only throw two uh, spirit emblems. You can also purchase them right here, but I, I haven't really found a need to purchase any yet. Let's go ahead and warp back to outskirts wall, gate path. And there's going to be some areas we got to clear and a couple tough enemies and then we'll be at the boss. The big boss. The chained ogre. Gonna try to keep these videos under an hour apiece. Um, as best I can. You, you can fight the dogs and whatnot if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip them for now. So, alright, this area, you wanna approach carefully. Actually, let me go back up there. Let's see if we can jump up here. Yep, there's an item right over here on the left. Some pellet. And actually, let's go across the roof. There's gonna be a giant rooster, and he looks pretty harmless, but he's actually capable of doing a lot of damage. If we sneak up behind him right here, we can uh, one-shot him. You don't even have to fight this guy. I'm just annoyed by him because he's done a lot of damage to me in the past. So I just want to kill him. <laughs> Alright, so you probably see down below, people are already like seeing me, basically. There's a lot of people down here. Uh, who's down there? I thought there was somebody down here watching me, but maybe it was just the uh, dogs or whatever. So that guy down there, uh, right above my head, he, he's kind of like a mini boss. I wouldn't even call him a mini boss. He's like a mini, mini boss. He's like pretty strong compared to your average foes. He's got two health bars, uh, but mm -hmm. he's not quite a boss. So if we're careful, we can actually sneak up behind him and take him out. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's make our way back across. Let's go on top of the roof actually, back to where we found this item. And we can uh, kind of just slingshot all the way around over here. Now make sure you don't fall into those carts because they make a lot of noise if you do. You just want to fall right in front of them. If you make a lot of noise it's gonna alert him and then he will attack you. Now this guy has two health bars uh, represented by two dots over his head. Uh, he's basically going to be a tutorial for jumping and uh, jumping to avoid sweeping attacks and dodging to avoid vertical attacks. So whenever you see like that red uh, kanji symbol or whatever uh, appear when he's attacking you, that means he's about to do a special attack. It's either going to be a sweeping attack or vertical attacks, so you have to either dodge or jump, and then you can hit him a couple times, 
most of the time you're going to want to be blocking and just w attack maybe once or twice. If you attack more than twice, he's probably going to start uh, countering you and that'll build up your posture meter a lot. So you, you got to be patient in these fights. If anything that I've learned in Sekiro so far, it's that you have to be patient in the boss fights. Don't get too impatient or you're going to die. Alright, so let's approach him and get the critical hit. Hopefully I can kill him first try. Alright. So if he does a thrust, you can parry to deflect. You want to jump before he does a sweep attack and step dodge before he does a grab or a any other attack, basically. Alright, so I tried to sidestep that, did not work. Let's go ahead and heal. I want to bring him out to the uh, middle of the area, to make it a little easier to fight. Oh, I should have jumped there, my bad. Always try to wait for the last second to dodge, because if you dodge too early, they always punish you, it seems like. Oh man, I better use a healing pellet. And I'm dead, but that's okay. It's not the end of the game. We can actually resurrect. Oh, never mind. I guess we don't have the resurrection thing yet. Or I already used it. <laughs> yeah, oh no, okay, I can resurrect. There we go. He's like, wait, what? I thought I killed you. All right, there we go. Almost got him. There it is. So we got our first prayer bead, which is pretty awesome, and a gourd seed, which is also pretty awesome. All right, very, very nice, very, very nice. We got him. So let's grab that fistful of ash over on the side there. Now you have a choice. Um, you can continue on, uh, but the next uh, sculptor shrine is kind of uh, far. So I would actually recommend going back to the, uh, sculpt or, sorry, I keep calling them shrines, but sculptor's idol. Uh, let's go back and boost our healing gourd and all that good stuff. Watch out for the dogs here. Oh god, there's three of them. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah. Once you get four prayer beads, this is where you can upgrade your health and attack power, but we don't have four yet. So let's go ahead and travel back to the dilapidated temple. Um, give, the, give Emma our gourd seed, which will make it so we can heal from our gourd flask twice instead of just once just once is practically useless uh, because we're gonna fight some tough enemies up ahead so we we want that double heal hmm. yep yep i died so she's explaining the resurrection technique so the more you resurrect and i the more a sickness like spreads on the people i'm not exactly sure to what extent that really affects the game but it does. The more you do it, the more it makes people sick. Alright, so let's give her that. That will uh, boost it. Yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy that, that conversation. But for the sake of keeping this video, uh, you know, pretty compact, we're gonna skip that. Alright, so now I can heal twice. Let's just rest. Wait, she didn't upgrade my gourd. Did I do all that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, now it's upgraded. Good thing I checked that, man. Alright, goodbye. Pull out my sword just so I can put it back and warp. 
Alright, let's go back. Now there's like one kind of big area to clear and then we will be to the chain ogre uh, boss. I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible without missing any items, guys. Alright, so because I rested, everybody respawned, but the giant samurai dude in the middle uh, did not. So don't worry about him coming back if you killed him. You don't actually have to kill them, uh, but if you do, you know, you get that prayer bead, which is pretty awesome. It rewards you for taking on the tough foes, you know? So let's uh, shimmy all the way to the right. Um, there's gonna be some dudes walking around. You can see patrolling. Uh, I would highly recommend taking them out as stealthily as possible. So I'm gonna stealth kill this guy. Or, uh, I tried to anyways. Alright, so all the way here on the right where those two guys are, um, wait, did I get spotted? Okay, a couple guys saw me. I'm just gonna drop down here, drop down here, because there's a big ugly thing right here that we're gonna try to critical strike. If you don't critical strike this person, they can be pretty hard to kill. Well, we got the attention of the sniper up there, but that's okay. I don't even think these guys are going to be able to find us down here. If we just stay... Oh, okay. Okay. They did find... Oh, whoops. Oh my goodness. Just accidentally killed myself there. Alright, let's get out of danger here really quick. You can tell the... Uh, Prosthetic arm makes it really easy to get out of danger as long as you know where those grappling points are. So it only takes a couple seconds usually and they'll stop chasing you. You'll know they'll stop looking for you when the yellow indicators above their heads go away. So let's just give it a second here. Also the music will die down. I'm just going to wait for those two to stop looking for me real quick. Alright, one left. Alright, so nobody's looking for me anymore. So now that we took out the uh, big fat thing, these guys are going to be much easier. Let's drop along the left side path this time. And we could try to critical hit that uh, one of these guys as they walk by. And you can basically rinse and repeat with these grappling hooks. You can just kill one, run away if you get too much attention. It's not a big deal. I don't recommend fighting a group of people because they can easily overpower you, in my experience. I'm gonna go ahead and use a pellet. Oh man, they saw me again. I'm gonna drop down, hide right here in this grass. Oh, hi. Let's take out this annoying sniper. Also in the tower with the sniper is a ceramic shard. Let's go kill the guy over here. Basically just clear out this whole area. Oh my, did not see that guy in the back. And I'm dead. Hopefully I can resurrect, but I don't think I actually can. Oh yeah, I can, all right, sweet. I keep trying to dodge with square because I've been playing a, a lot of, a oh my gosh, see what I mean about the double teams? Let's get out of here, let's get out of here. I need to heal. In Assassin's Creed, you dodge with a square. <laughs> Let's take out the bald guy first. They're usually a lot easier to kill. There we go. 
almost done with this area. Just kill all these remaining dudes. Um, all right. Now, don't miss this area. There's actually some secrets here. Talk to this lady first. She's got a little bell thingy. She thinks you're her son. Uh, I'm just going to say nothing. She's going to go ahead and give you the bell, which will access it, uh, allow us to access an area later on in the game. Uh, and then uh, just go ahead and jump over out the window, and you can see her, her actual son like dying right here pretty much. Go ahead and talk to him a little bit. He'll thank you for talking to his mom. And then go ahead and uh, drop down to the base of this building that the mom was in. Kill the uh, crazy bird things. Oh my gosh. Did I just die from that thing? I told you guys. They are so freaking annoying. They kill me more than like any other enemy. These stupid things. Alright, uh, go ahead and hit the... Uh, pots here we can sneak in and grab a ton of light coin purses which will give us a lot of money so that's a really good secret to find if you did not find this one can also get in that way all right so we really don't have much health um and this part is kind of difficult but we can pretty much avoid most of these guys see that guy at the top of the wall with the big cannon He'll start sniping you with that cannon as soon as he sees you, and it does massive damage. It would one-shot me at, at my current health. So, um, you see that ledge down there? Uh, we're actually going to try to make our way to that ledge, so I want to grapple onto that branch. So, I'm going to rush these guys. Let's actually just drop down first, and uh, we can stealth attack. That, uh, man, no, I'm not going to stealth attack him, because if I do, they're going to start shooting me. I'm just going to run and grapple that branch and then jump down there and they won't be able to chase me. So let's do it. And just jump down here. All right. Go ahead and grab the items down here. Yeah, they can't do anything about it. Go ahead and grapple across. Grab some scrap iron, which basically is an upgrade material. And then go ahead and grapple all the way. Oh god, jump, jump, jump. If you hear that cannon, do not hold still because probably you will die. Okay. I don't think he saw me. Go ahead and jump down here. And we're going to shimmy this wall. We will go kill those guys, don't worry. We're just going to do it stealthily. A lot of times in this game, fighting them head-on is not the easiest way to do things. Alright, let's go ahead and grapple up here. Very nice. So... Oh. Grab this. Boom. Shortcut to our next Sculptor's Idol. I'm going to go ahead and rest here. This is actually going to be the last Sculptor's Idol that we find in this video. The boss is just ahead. But before we fight that boss, don't you want to go kill those guys that we were looking at? I do. Kill the giant chicken. There's a memory thingy right there. All right, so there's the cannon guy. Let's let's go kill him, shall we? Hey, bud. It's good to kill people just to get experience, and also he has black gunpowder, which is very useful. It's for upgrading your prosthetic limb a little bit later. All right, uh, we actually missed something I forgot. So that guy up top right there, right above my head, there's a shop up there. So let's go check out that shop. But be before we do, I want to kill uh, the rest of these guys. All right.
One thing I forgot to equip was our uh, shurikens. So we could... Uh, I thought I was going to break his posture before he could hurt me. That's alright. Uh, we don't even need to kill these guys. I'm just killing them for experience, basically. So, Alright, let's go ahead and head back up. And uh, we're getting really close to fighting our first real uh, test of strength here. Alright. Let's uh, go ahead and check out this memory. So it looks like the Divine Heir and Emma having a conversation. Little insight into the storyline, if you will. Okay, guys, I actually do want to go back to that uh, Sculptor's Idol so I can heal. Because this is going to be crazy. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and grab this item real quick. It won't hurt anything. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and kill these guys. Try to kill the guy with the uh, hat on his head first, which is what I did. And I'm actually just going to go right on back. Oops. And I'm going to rest, which will respawn all the guys, but that's okay. Alright, so this is basically going to be the Chained Ogre boss fight sequence, guys. So what I like to do first is take out these two guys really easily. Let's go ahead and drop down and just sneak up to these guys. And we can talk about some boss strategies, because this boss is really tough. Or rather, he can be. He does the same like three or four attacks over and over and over so you just have to master dodging those attacks it can be easier said than done uh, his grabs are very very fast and hard to grab uh, hard to dodge but you're gonna want to try to stay very close to him we're gonna fight him up in the corner up there because if you fight him on the stairs uh, if he grabs you sometimes he'll throw you off the cliff and kill you um, but basically we're gonna be locked onto him and circling him and attacking him once or twice dodging all of his attacks by dodging behind him. Up and to the left there is a dude with a spear. Um, what I like to do is instantly run by the ogre, run up here, jump over his attack, and just kill him really quick. By the time you kill this guy, the ogre will be ready to play. Alright, let's fight him over in this corner. I don't want to get too close to the stairs, so let's always bring him back here if you can. Oh, that that is very hard to dodge. That's why you don't want to get too far away from him. You want to try to stay close to him at all times if you can. I'm going to go ahead and use an Ungo Sugar as well. Uh, no, let's jump back down. Try to stay close to him if you can. Because it makes it easier to dodge his grabs. Whew. That was close. go. Just keep rinsing repeating everything. If you see him cower, go ahead and unload a couple hits. Oh, come on, man. That did not hit me. We're getting close to his first bit of health. There we go. Oh, 
Ah, oh, he got me and he's gonna throw me far. That's all right. Woo! That was close. Come back down here, big boy. Oh my god. Dude's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. What are you doing up there, dude? You're not gonna get me. Wow, can we actually cheese him this way? Alright, here we go. Oh my god. Alright, well we can resurrect. It's not good to fight him near a wall because then you can't dodge behind him. I want to fight him over here, but he refuses. There we go. Got him, boys. Oh, yeah. Feels good, man. Feels really good. Whew. We got a prayer bead and we got Shinobi Medicine Rank 1, which basically means that our healing items will heal more, which is awesome. So our pellets our gourd, all that stuff. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, guys, uh, before we go save and end the video, uh, go ahead and grapple up here, grab the uh, monocular, and then there's another item over here on the left you can grab, a, a gourd seed, which is super, super important. And lastly, let's go ahead and grab that ceramic shard. Before we head back to the save, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this first uh, episode. I don't think we can open this door. Yeah, no. Uh, going to be continuing the series from this point. But yeah, uh, coming from playing Dark Souls and Bloodborne, like if you guys are new to my channel, I've done a complete Bloodborne walkthrough um, with all the DLC. And I've also, God, I can't even get up here. Uh, I did a uh, complete Dark Souls 2 walkthrough as well. Um, so I have a lot of experience in these type of games. And so far I gotta say, this game is really, really fun. All right, let's, maybe if I go up here and then go up here and then maybe I can jump up here. There we go. And uh, really looking forward to what this game has to offer. So let's go ahead and go back to Dilapidated Temple real quick. Give Emma our Gourd Seed, which will allow us to heal three times. So the game's already getting a little bit easier, just in that we can heal more. Uh, it's actually really, really hard that they put that uh, Chained Ogre right in the beginning of the game because he's, he's going to turn a lot of people off from this game, I bet. But it also teaches you... You know, if you can master the repetitive attacks that the enemies do, no matter how devastating that they might be if they land, you can defeat them as long as you are patient and calculated. And the, the feeling of exhilaration that you get when you finally defeat that really hard enemy is why people love uh, these kind of Soulsborn Sekiro type games. So let's go ahead and give her the uh, Gourd Seed. Boom! Very, 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 very nice. Uh, she's talking about the uh, bell. We can go ahead and give that to the uh, Buddha guy here. Or a sculptor, sorry. He talks about Buddha a lot. 
And he's going to go ahead and give us Shinobi Esoteric Text, a book of secrets that details a variety of techniques employed by the Shinobi. Within this text are immer- innermost secrets of Shinobi art, such as attacks performed in the air, hiding one's body to avoid detection. Uh, it's basically like uh, instruction manual on how to play the game. Yeah. So now we can go ahead and level up our skills. But before we do that, let's go ahead and give him the old bell. Ah, oh, whoops. Nope, 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 nope. Didn't want to do that. So, oh, okay. So he wants us to give the bell to the uh, Buddha thing, but we go do that later. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yes, I know what an inventory screen is. All right. Here is our skills. So we only have uh, this one right now, which is Shinobi Medicine Rank 1. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, we don't have any other skills unlocked at this moment, so we can't really do anything. Uh, but that's okay. So that's going to be it for the end of this video, guys. Uh, I hope to see you in the next walkthrough video where we will continue from that Ashina outskirts bonfire, or sorry, pff, sculptor's idol. We can go ahead and look at the skills if you guys want real quick. So we can do Whirlwind Slash or we can save up for Mikiri Counter, which basically enables us to counter an enemy thrust, which is pretty useful. Uh, not sure uh, which one I want to use more. This one is probably good when you are fighting multiple enemies. So I'm probably going to save up and just get the uh, Mikiri Counter, though. I feel like I'm going to use that more. All right, guys. Well, this is Lucian Sword. Hope to see you in the next video of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Take it easy, guys.